professional bout is scheduled for four three minute rounds in the heavyweight division. Introducing first, making his way to the blue corner, here comes Cameron Tukua. It is the 21st of July, 2018. We're here at ABA Stadium. Welcome to Battle of the Brave. To my fake left, oh, here he comes. We've got the Chop Chop, yeah, Chad. I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> Just in time for our first pro of the evening. Hi, hello, Mr. Chop Chop. <laughs> so here we go, professional bouts. Now, we do actually have Ina somewhere, but she's gone off to... Uh, yeah, here she is, I can see her, I can see her. She's got food. She's got food, yes, <laughs> yes. We've been starving for food. Anyway, let's go uh, focus into uh, the heavyweight contest here. Okay, we've got Cameron versus Tukua uh, versus Mossy Afor. Mossy Afor has actually quite a uh, quite, quite a background in combat box uh, combat. Uh, let's say about two uh, wins in MMA, one win in amateur MMA, and uh, win uh, 20 wins, 14 losses, and six draws in kickboxing. So 40 kickboxing bouts. So you know that's quite a lot of uh, ring experience. And even though it's in a different code, it's experienced nonetheless. So let's see um, how that uh, how that works for him in the uh, pro in the professional boxing um, scene. Exactly, and he's got an AK. Uh, what was it called? IKBF Super Cruiserweight K1 Pro Boxing Title. So um, he's worth. He's, obviously, he's worth. He's uh, got a big experience in kickboxing, and he's. Oh, Ina has a, just arrived, and with food nonetheless. <laughs> oh, oh, the sausages! Yeah. Sausages! Oh, my favourite! <laughs> I love my sausages! <laughs> I'm gonna be real quick. I don't even try to I know, right? Oh, good. I'll eat chips. No, 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 don't worry about it. Thank you. Go on to the missus. <laughs> I know, right? How annoying am I? Oh, good. I'll eat chips. Yeah. I'm not a true Kiwi, am I? There we go, Mossy, the Massacre of Foa. Now, Cameron has only had one amateur boxing bout, so... So Mossy, you know, vastly experienced in the ring, whether it's boxing, mixed martial arts, or kickboxing. But it is experienced nonetheless, and let's see how that works for him. And also a champion in the uh, kickboxing world. So, you know, a champion, he's going he's gonna to have some heart there. He's, he was, he's hungry, he's shown that he can, you know, be a champion, and that shows, you know, a lot. You know, it's a lot to his credit. We've got a big treat right now. We've got dinner and a show. <laughs> <laughs> so he just switched up there too, leading with the right hand, with putting the right foot forward. You can tell who Afoa is with his uh, big massive uh, tattoo in the back. Tattoo with his surname. <laughs> Can't get that wrong. Good hope not. So a four, um, a four coming in at the age of 26, where Cameron's 33, so a little bit of an age gap. Oh, and the a little bit of a on the inside. Not much of a weight difference, 109.5 for a four, and Cameron is 113.5. Both from South Auckland, they're both like orthodox pilots. They sure are. A little bit of a height difference. It's not recorded there for Morse, but 187. But the height, of, height difference blue. is apparent. He stands a bit taller too. You know, he's, he stands up quite tall. Um, uh, but you know, even though he is, you can see Moss is using his lead hand out quite long and using the jab. Um, and actually, he's got kind of uh, quite long reach as well. It's, yeah. There's a bit of a bit of a difference between kickboxing and uh, boxing. Obviously, this minus the uh, legs, um, but also the way um, you punch as well, from what I've heard. Yeah, that's it. You know, they're going to hold their weight different. Um, you know, you've got to be aware of kicks, so 
uh, I, you know, I heard that you don't want to be as mobile on your feet. You want to be a bit more grounded, so you, you know, you're not going to be too vulnerable to the kicks, disrupting your balance. Um, but if, you know, at the same time, you got feet, so you're not going to focus as much into you know your punching, and you're not going to um, use you know different skills and, and etc. That you know boxes, pure boxes, will be utilising. Now, we've got quite a bit of information on Mossy because he's fought in King of the Ring twice, and both of those times was against uh, another kickboxer who's also known as a pro boxer as well, which is Saint Hotman. Uh, Mossy has came, lo- uh, came away with those both fights with Mossy, but I, I think he'll do quite well in this division. Yeah, Zane Hoffman is a good boxer. I've seen him with, in some pro uh, boxing fights on a few occasions. You know, he shows good basics, good boxing. Um, I don't know if he's as big as Mossy. It's uh, interesting because Mossy... Oh, there's a good shot. To That's right hand there. Yeah. And then there. It's uh, quite interesting, really, because Mossy is... Uh, um, he's weighed in at 109.5 kg. And those two times in King in the Ring, they were 86 kg uh, tournaments. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that's it. So he's gone. He's gone a bit north since. Yeah. So it's quite a bit of a difference. 20 kg's difference. Well, I wonder if this is more of his natural weight. Um, well, actually, uh, when we spoke to David Light yesterday, uh, there's some boxers that who fight at heavyweight when they should be actually like middleweight, for instance. And maybe that's. Uh, He's one of those examples that he shouldn't be at heavyweight, he should be more of a cruiserweight like heavy. And he might actually fight better at those weights as well. But you never know how he might do. Um, in fact, uh, another thing to know, Mossy has actually got a fight booked already for August 10th against Smiley, Novo- Novosa, if uh, you know who Smiley is. Oh, I do know who Smiley is. And one thing I know is he can punch very hard. Oh, yeah, yeah, he has been in retirement, or a bit of a hiatus, if you, if you will. Um, but it seems like yeah, he's coming back, isn't he? Yeah. So, and lo- you know, we all like Smiley. He always smiles, obviously. <laughs> uh, yeah, he, yeah, he is. He is a nice bloke. And he packs a punch. Oh, these guys pack a punch as well. You see there, you know, Mossy quite disciplined behind the jab using his lead hand. Yeah, that was a nice straight lift there. I might pay if, you know, after throwing the jab, landing the jab, he'd follow up with a little bit more. It's just giving um, Cameron a little bit more, you know, a few more opportunities to get his own shots off. That's it. When he's just throwing the jab and nothing else, um, it makes blue, yeah. Able- just, oh, exactly. Just, just like that, you know, working off the jab, it sets up your other punches. And like, yeah, he perhaps has a bit of experience, you know, first round, uh, have a look at your opponent, see how he reacts to what you do. Where is weaknesses? Where are strong points? And you know, adjusting accordingly. And you know, landed some good shots in. Let's see if you can land some more this round. I guess, like with Mossy, um, he's got a lot of experience in all these other codes, but he's not bringing his fighting experience into his belt. No, like we said, he just seems like he's just um, got the jab tonight. So I haven't really seen much of his right hand. Um, I'd like no, to see no. that come through. But, you know, like a chess match, you know, you can't just go guns blazing straight away. You've got to see what your opponent's got um, and, you know, figure out the puzzle bit by bit. Oh, so okay, there, go. there we go. It seems like he's starting to settle into the bout. And perhaps, you know, that is his experience showing. He, you know, he's before throwing, he's throwing with a purpose because he sees something that he's seen earlier in this bout. And at the same time, like, the other boxer has got a bit of a height difference, a reach difference. So he maybe he's having trouble with that as well today. That's right. When you know when you when you're at a disadvantage, you've got to think a little bit more of how to get around that reach advantage. I guess there's a four rounder. Um, we've only had three rounds previously, so we've still got a little bit of time to get That's there. Right. That's right, and they are three minute round bouts too. So a little bit more duration per round, as well as more uh, an extra round. Is that Junior Putty in the red corner? It is. It yeah. is. The pit bull. A pitbull junior party. Hey, no, I thought I saw something on social media that he's switched to MMA. Yeah, oh, is it? He used to be in MMA, but now he's going back to it. Okay, well, interesting. So I know he was looking up to line um, up a boxing match, but um, yeah, it looks like he's switching codes, so there'll be yeah. a little bit of management uh, problems at, at that time. So I guess a switching code was probably the best uh, thing to do for him. And there we go, we've got some hard hitters coming in. Yeah, they're looking to, to go into the body now. The boys are starting to settle into the into the bout. Starting to throw some, you know, yeah, the other punches that they've got in the repertoire. Moving on from the jab. 
Well, it's interesting because uh, I guess at the beginning he was more the aggressive and not landing, where the blue corner was landing, even though he was on the defence. And now he's actually now he was actually landing just um, over the last uh, minute or minute and a half of the fight. Well, yeah, the green corner was saying earlier, you know, a lot of experience, and you know, it's throwing with a purpose. You don't know what you're up against in the early uh, rounds, um, but as the round goes, you start to understand the puzzle in front of you, and you adjust accordingly. Coming into round three, the first time, oh no, not the first time, uh, well, <laughs> let me say this again. Coming into round three, this is the first time where it's not the last round of the fight, but you never know, this could, you never know, there could be a knockout in this round as well. you got Red Corner already coming out, oh, ready to go. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I guess the corner was like, very quick, they knew what to say. And like you're saying that, you know, these are, these are big guys, you know, they're, they're both over a hundred kilos, um, and there can be a knockout at any moment. You know what I'm seeing from these guys is that you know they're quite patient. They're working behind their jab. They're setting shots up. Um, you know they've got good mentalities in there. You know they're not coming out guns blazing. Uh, not too trigger happy. Oh, and apart they're from picking, that now. <laughs> but, they, but, they, but they are picking their their shots. They're picking their moments, and that is you know experience. Yeah. I think um, I believe Cameron probably would have had um, an MMA fight or something like that because he say to his gym he's coming from Orphan MMA so I assume he's had some sort of fight experience outside that one amateur fight. Yeah, that's it. And you know he could be he's probably been in the gym for a while, sparring with you know a lot of sparring with a lot of guys. You know, some people you know they don't have a lot of bouts, but they have been in in the sport for quite a while. You know, and over the years you pick up, you know, all the little tricks. You catch on that, you know, you have to be relaxed and you have to think. You know, we're showing that. You know, even though it, on paper it looks like he doesn't have a lot of experience, he is showing that perhaps he, he probably does have a bit of experience in the room. It's it's also uh, quite nice for us to see that as well. To have a nice little cheeky surprise. Mm. Uh, getting some hard hits now. He's oh well, what a comeback! What a shot! You know, but I like, like you know, with his experience, you know, he's showing when, you know, he's picking his shots. You know, he's he's using his hands, using his defense, and you know, finding the openings. Both box, um, boxers are going at it with each other, landing both heavy hits. I can actually feel those hits from here. They're, they're, they're quite loud. Yeah, they are big. They are big boys, and you know, um, they are professionals, so they. They're professional boxers, so they will only be wearing 10 ounce professional gloves. Um, and we've had corporate bouts that have been 16s, and then prior to that, uh, we had amateur bouts uh, where they have 10 and 12 ounce gloves. Oh, I never knew about that, so I want to what the size of the gloves for amateurs. Um, that's, that's actually quite handy. How about for the um, for the cadets? What gloves do they wear? Uh, they'll, they'll still wear ten ounce gloves. Ten ounce right? gloves. Um, up until you get to sixty nine kg plus, then it, they will switch to twelve ounce. And also, the, that's for the elite bouts. Uh, elite so bouts, if you've got uh, under nineteens, you know, youth and junior cadet, uh, they wear ten ounce gloves regardless. Uh, but they wear headgears. Oh, oh a four coming with those thunderous. But hooks. he's not doing anything about it. No, he needs to follow it up. He, he was. It, he looks quite, he was looking quite stuck before. Just seems he's just throwing one, two, one, two, three combination. I'd just like to see him keep that pressure on. Maybe with a, um, yeah, of course this corner has probably d done a great job, but probably with a more better uh, oh, boxing trainer, have actually learned more punches. But what, but what he has shown is that he knows what to throw and when to throw it, and he's picking his shots well. He's patient, he's waiting for the opportunities, and when the opportunities present themselves, he's been able to land some talent blows. That's, that's right. And that's coming from the combat experience. And I don't know if um, you could see the face of the blue corner there, but he looked a bit stunned after those, uh, yeah, those hooks that landed. He could have actually gone right in there and knocked him out from then. And like, I'm a little bit surprised. And now, now I can actually say, properly, first time of the night, we're coming into the fourth round. Yes. Fourth and final. The fourth and final. Such a small little sign for the fourth round. <laughs> compared to the other three. <laughs> yeah, compared to the other three. Final round. 
I think that Mossy is, is starting to, to take control of this bout. Um, the blue corner, you know, still showing patience, looking, throwing you know, good shots, but he hasn't really found those telling blows, those decisive blows that can uh, earn him the round. I'm quite a has got a really amazing left jab there, and he's continuing to land that throughout the bout. I think like, Blue Corn has also like landed some good body part, uh, good body shots as well. So um, that doesn't seem to phase uh, Red Corner as much. No, they both got sort of different strengths here, and um, yeah, yeah, perhaps you know, Mossy doesn't mind taking those body shots. You know, with that experience, you know, he has an idea of what shots he can and can't take and then uh, perhaps using it as an opportunity for taking the body shots and coming back with their own, his own counter punch. It's a good point. Though he's taken some um, blows, he really doesn't show it, does it? Does he? So uh, I guess for the opponent, when you're throwing um, everything at you know someone and they're not showing that they're hurt at all, it's it's kind of... Yeah, I don't know what it would do It'd be demoralising if you're not really... If you're hitting an opponent and they're not too phased by your shots. Um, perhaps you've got to think i got to think about winning the rounds. Yeah, and the thing with, um, you have to, it's, when people actually say, uh, like, they go into the ring and they're actually hitting, getting, receiving quite hard hits, and they're showing that it's affecting them, it's like, no, no, it's not affecting me. It, it's obviously affecting you. That's probably a little tip for those people. It's like, you get it. It is actually affecting you. <laughs> it's, uh, I think any show of emotion, you know, um, is giving a Too bit of a it, That's right. I've got, this is quite an interesting fight as well because I, um, I don't know who's going to be winning this fight. Uh, I'm probably more swaying towards the red corner. Yeah, he's landed the good shots. I can see he's bloody the nose of the blue corner. Yeah. He's, just, he's picking his shots well. He knows what to throw and when to throw it. He's starting to solve the puzzle. You know, and he's inviting those shots and he's taking the shots on the body, coming back upstairs. Yeah, and he's just, I think he's walking away with the bout with me from this point. There oh, we go. There we go. Again, you know, he's picking the shots. He's taking the shots, coming straight back. You know, it's, that's experience. He's making the adjustments from the early rounds. What, would, what do you think causes a blood nose? I mean, of course, there's like the broken nose. But like, what do you think? Like this broken blood, blood vessel? Blood vessels, burst blood vessels. It world. is blood vessels. Um, I know when I was boxing, I had to have my nose cauterized a couple of times. Oh, just, Bloody nose was just my, you know, one thing? little punch and I'd just be bleeding. You know, um, I used to uh, have a friend that every time they got bloody noses, they used to use uh, tampons. It's like, you're kidding. I'm not kidding. <laughs> uh, well, they, they, they work. Well, I don't know how that would go down in the boxing ring. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that, I don't know. That could actually work. You know? I don't know how Ivor would legal? feel about that, eh? I don't, I, think, I don't, Ivor would I like don't that. think any foreign objects like that are allowed. <laughs> we need to find out. <laughs> All right, this has been a great fight night. Uh, well, great fight, I should say. Uh, who do you think is going to take it away? Uh, I think the red corner is boxed. He's boxed pretty well. You know, he's been intelligent. He hasn't overexerted himself. Um, and, you know, he's just been patient. And when the shots have come and the opportunities pre presented themselves, he took advantage of them. And look at the blue corner. He's actually got quite swollen eyes as well. He has taken some good, uh, some good blows from Mossy. Uh, tonight, I think you know he's, he's probably the first round. No one really took that round, and then from the second, third, and fourth. Personally, I feel that Mossy adjusted um, and, and walked away with those rounds. What do you think, Ina? Um, I would agree with Chad. I just think um, Mossy just yeah he boxed and he just slowly but surely um, took the fight. I think in the first round, uh, Mossy actually struggled a bit. Or he looked like he struggled and then came out, uh, did a lot better in the second, third and fourth round. So let's see how the judges see it. Yeah, not taking any way, anything from Blue. He definitely had some power shots in there. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, after four rounds of professional heavyweight boxing action, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. We're finally a unanimous decision winner. Oh, wow. Oh, right. Well, I guess, uh, what do we wow. know, right? <laughs> I think that, I don't know. I'll call that controversial, but um, at the end of the day, it's the judge's decision that counts. And was it a unanimous? Yeah, it was a unanimous decision as well. Okay. But, you so, know, yeah. uh, you never know. We're, we're sitting from above. You never know what the judges are saying down below, closer to the ring. What do, how do you feel about that? 
<laughs> well, I think that's the first one that me and Chad have called um, wrong tonight. I think well, we've, well, we all had a good run, and then um, yeah, I guess Blue was more of the power shotter. Yeah, I can't really. I, I think they exchanged uh, similar power shots, but I just yeah, I don't know. I thought well, you know. Um, at least the second and th- uh, sorry, the second, uh, four, uh, the third and fourth round was more of a red corner fight. But I was not sure about the first two sh- uh, rounds. Uh, well, I mean, you know, your first round it's your first round. You don't want to go in there throw too much because uh, you could get caught with something that uh, you're not expecting. Um, so a cautious first round. I mean, when you watch like the best fighters in the world, often they lose the first round because uh, you've got to understand what you're looking at. You don't want to be caught by surprise, and that's when good boxers are vulnerable. Is when they don't know what's in front of them. In fact, uh, Gunnar Jackson won his first fight uh, against uh, Josh Joshua Tai. Um, so yeah, it's one of those things that, in fact, world champions have lost their first fight and gone on to be well, world champions. That's it. But you just never know. At the end of the day, when you leave it to the judges, um, yeah, I'm gonna. S- I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, coming up next, we've got a <laughs> massive fight. Yeah, move, on. Move, on. <laughs> move on. We've got a massive fight. This is what we've all been waiting for. Daniel Ty versus David Lyon. Are you guys excited? Uh, Super excited. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, known Dave for a long time. He's a good fighter. Power in both hands. Experience, speed. He's got the works. He's got, he's got it all. Okay, you can only get this here on Glad Rap. It's coming up here on YouTube, Glad Rap channel. Watch out for it. <laughs>